You're watching Three Pound Fishing, sponsored by these great companies. What's up, folks? We're back out on the lake, and uh, I was trying to think about what I could talk about today. And the thing I came up with is the combination of SI, Hummingbirds Side Imaging, and live scope. So we're gonna find some brush piles utilizing our SI, and I think that's where the value is with SI right now, is just finding those brush piles. And you're gonna find some fish too, but once you get to that structure, you can truly identify whether or not there's fish on them with that live scope. So that's what's on tap for today. A nice evening right before storms rolling in. Should be good. Thanks for joining me. So obviously one of the important things we need to talk about first off is your settings on your SI. So I have done several videos now on SI and I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna go over my settings. I'm using the, the Mega 3, the Generation 3 Mega Plus, I should say, Humminbird unit, 10 inch Helix. And it's fabulous. I'm not gonna lie, folks. It's just a great upgrade from even the Generation 2. And I'll show you some of the images that we will see today. Um, here in a little bit, but let's just go over my settings real quick, okay? We're gonna go to side imaging real quick. You're gonna hit that menu button and you're gonna get the opportunity to mess with your sensitivity. Now, I just got this unit. I haven't really tweaked it that much to be quite honest with you, but you can tweak that up and down all around until you get the image that you want and every lake is gonna be different. So I always recommend start around 10. If you're getting up to 12 or 13, something might else needs to be tweaked on your unit. So I always try to keep it around the 11 to 12 mark. So then we're gonna go down to range. I've always talked about this folks, and that is range should be something that's manageable and you can see fish on. If you've got that range all the way out to 120, it's just hard to find fish. It's hard to find structure. It certainly doesn't look as grand as it would if you had it on 70, so to speak. That's what I've got. Chart speed, I like to start mine off at five. I feel good about that. And when I go a speed of roughly around 3.6, that seems to give me the best image. The last one I'm gonna talk about is contrast. And again, you're just gonna tweak it till you see the image that you wanna see, what, you, what makes you feel good. Now, I know a lot of people are talking about the colors and a lot of people are using this number four from a very popular bass fisherman, a number four. So why not? Let's try it today. Check it out. See if number four is the one we want to use. Um, I've never tried it out before, but I've us usually used the amber, the number two. But I'm going to try number four today out just because I hear a lot of people talking about it. So let's find some structure, maybe even some fish on SI, and then go up with the live scope and find those fish. All right, folks, here you go. We're looking for any type of hump, any type of hump with structure on top of it. These type of areas will definitely attract crappie. I usually start on points on lakes. I always tell people, if you don't know a lake, start at a point on the main lake and move out. Great places to start, and this is where we're at right here. We're gonna try that out. Doesn't look like a lot of fish, but we're just gonna start somewhere, and that's gonna be where everybody should know. I like to start off with a minnow rig, and a jig rig. And when I'm vertically fishing brush piles, I tend to have double jig setups on that jig rig. Up here in front, what I have is the 10 inch, the 1042 Garmin live scope system right here. And then I also have a Helix 9 here. And I use it primarily just for mapping. I'm pretty much just staring at the live scope system the entire time, but sometimes I'm down looking at the map verifying where I am related to the old marks that I have on these on this unit. Now this is the first time I've fished this spot this year, so I really don't know if there's going to be any fish. I suppose if there's no fish on it, you won't see this part of the video. <laughs> but the uh, I'm excited folks. It's it's post spawn. I, I am a fan of post-spawn and summer fishing. I think it's just fantastic. I think the bite on my lakes are, is just unbelievable how good it can be. Uh, yeah, I can't, I can't say enough good things about it, to be honest with you. Um, so I always start off with my jig pole in my left hand. I try my best to keep that consistent so I remember which pole has. Since I fish with 10 footers across the board, I can, I can forget which pole is my minnow and which one is not. I'm gonna start pretty deep. And I usually have a buoy here. I should have a buoy here, but I don't have a buoy here with me. 
All right, so on LiveScope, I have identified where the brush pile is now. And there are fish on it. There are fish on it. So, and they are at, uh, they are at 14 foot. So, they are roughly 10 foot, it's right here. This is how easy this, this live scope stuff is. It's just hilarious to be able to see these fish so And now we just gotta hope, there's three big fish on it. We are almost right underneath it right now. And folks, it's just like that. <laughs> That guy might be hung up on a, on a tree branch, but this guy right here, I saw going at it on live scope. And that's how you find fish. So we find the structure with the SI, but then we use, but then we use the live scope to actually identify the fish on the structure. It's amazing technology, just amazing. Look at that, look at that slab. That's a solid, it's 11 and a half inch fish right there, folks. So let's talk about screen size. We've talked about it before, but I just want to emphasize the fact that you want to get the biggest screen possible. Now, Humminbird has the 7, the 9, the 10, the 12. I believe it's even there's even a 15. Folks, get the biggest screen you can afford. I've kind of narrowed it in on the 10. It just wasn't worth the extra 500 bucks to go up to the 12, in my opinion. But 10, to me, is just, it's just a perfect size. So if you can afford it, if you can get a 10, I think that's a great number. Too many times I hear people getting the 7 and 9 and wish they had upgraded just a little bit more to get to that 10 number. So the combination of side imaging and live scope is just absolutely deadly. Find the structure with your side imaging. Identify the fish with your live scope. And this is a pile that you know we haven't fished all year. There's not a ton of fish down there, I can tell you. But you can absolutely identify where they're at and uh, focus in on them. I'm not to the point as good as some guys are, I guess, that can really track the fish. I, you know, I'm not there yet, but hopefully someday I'll get there. Let's do that again. That was fun. There's one. <laughs> Woo, baby, live scope. It's the real deal, folks. The real deal. Right there. Good fish. There's stack on this thing. I can't believe my other rod hasn't gotten a hit yet. <laughs> That's a good fish, too. Bam! It's happening automatic now, folks. You look at that live scope, the thing is just jacked full of fish. It's funny how it happens. This, this pile right here is absolutely loaded. I'm gonna show you some of the live scope right now. So here's my image on live scope. And let me tell you, this, this tree was just absolutely stacked with them. Um, basically, you know, I obviously in this image, you can see that I could mess with the gain, but the biggest key for live scope is always going to be manually setting your depth, manually setting your forward view, and then also tweaking your gain, no matter where you're at, you're always going to be tweaking your gain from time to time. You want to maximize the use of your screen space. And just like the side imaging, the hummingbird units, you definitely want to get the biggest screen that you possibly can get. Don't get caught up in getting the nine inch just because it's $500, $600, $700. This is the 1042. There's also a 1022. Um, you know, they start, I believe, at 1,000, go up to 1,500. If you can afford it, folks, get the biggest screen you can because it's just going to add to your experience on the lake. So the question I get a lot is, how long do I stay on brush piles before I move? If I'm getting bit, if I'm seeing stuff on live scope, and that's a big advantage of live scope is if I see fish, I'll probably stay around probably even longer than I normally would. But at the end of the day, I'm looking for active fish. If I'm getting bit with live scope and I'm seeing fish, I'm going to stay on a lot longer. But if I don't see fish and I've hit the main parts of my brush pile, I'm out of there. The magic number for me is usually five to 10 minutes. You know pretty quickly whether or not you've got active fish. So today we've got a, a high of 85 with a monster storm. All these storm warnings are out tonight. It's supposed to be here around seven o'clock, eight o'clock-ish, so we still have some time to fish, but 
the storms are coming. But we've got water temperature that's roughly around 75 degrees and it's, uh, it's very nice. Don't forget folks, guided trips this summer on these brush piles. You will not be disappointed. We will hammer them. I cannot begin to tell you how quick it happens too. It's not a, you know, a lot of times a full day is not, not necessary. We can really put the hurt into them in a short amount of time. And if you want to feel that thump, this is the way I like to fish right here. Um, it doesn't get much better than this. Now we are on top of it. That is wild. Oh my gosh. That was freaking awesome. That is so wild. Hopefully it breaks it off and then it'll just come up to the top around here. That didn't take long. Oh, Steve, you changed the reel on me. <laughs> oh baby that is a solid 13 and a half 13 and a half fish that is a hog i'm wondering if that is a was a big old crappie dang it hit that spot lock on that on that old tricks Another great piece of technology, I'll tell you what. You put it all together and it's just a fishing machine. I gotta change this. My cousin is a left-hander and he comes into my boat and he changes the, the handles on me. That was a surprise. He really liked this wind grip. Don't forget, you can get 10% off. Just use that pound, that three pound fishing code for all the all the fishing pole needs you have from ACC. And that was a good fish. That was a good fish of the day right there. Best fish of the day. So again, we're just gonna review and just keep reviewing it. Side image, find your structure, go up to it with your live scope, and now you're gonna find the fish. So we're not relying so much on the side imaging anymore. The only thing we're, we're using it for is finding the structure. Scope is what we're using to find the fish. We get on these structures, I mean, there's just no guesswork, and it's just unbelievable.
Can't say it enough, folks. I hate saying folks. I wish I'd say something cooler. But you saw how my fishing pole went in the water there, so I can't act too cool. I'll tell you what, with LiveScope, you can get in an area and you can just scan as you're in the area looking for new stuff, new structure, new, I mean, just where are the fish at? And it's just amazing. Here comes another fish. Here comes one right here. There it is. Told you. Watched it all happen. That's just awesome. Good fish. Oh, got a didn't set the hook, but you get the idea. That was a big fish. That was 13 inch anyway. All right, so let's go find one more brush pile. Let's do it again using side imaging. Man, that's not supposed to happen. Lose a fishing pole like that. I've been fishing for a long time, folks, a long time. And I have never, ever had that happen. I've never had a fish strong enough to actually take it under and keep it under. Unbelievable, unbelievable. Kind of funny at the same time. You know they can't keep that fishing pole under for that long. I am looking, looking, looking. Somebody's gonna be the lucky person that finds that rod. That was a great, that's my 10 footer folks, 10 footer ACC crappie stick. They don't get much better. Right there, good structure. A lot of this is good structure. We're looking for something a little bit bigger. We'll probably be fishing this log here. Ooh, there's your structure. A little blown out. But, you know, the good thing about it is we can go up there with live scope now and we're gonna find out if there's really fish on there. I see some specks. We've caught fish we've gone, and I truly believe the reason why that is is because of live scope. <laughs> Big fish of the day, folks. We're gonna end on that one. Perfect day. That's every day. That's a 15 plus incher. I'll let it go. Folks, for more information on those guided trips, check it out at 3poundfishing at gmail.com. We will put the deadly combination of live scope and side imaging together and we will crush it on the lake. Hey, thanks for watching. Please subscribe, hit that notification bell, 